One morning, I, I'll never forget this, I was, uh, it was early, it was just the crack of dawn. I was going north into the Highland area for work. And I noticed this young man, very young, uh, junior high age. He was on his bicycle and he would have been at least a mile away from the junior high. So on his bike he had this tote that was meant to, you know, have kids in it. And I thought to myself when I saw him, I said, well, who is up with kids uh, that early in the morning? And then I looked and I noticed he had his tuba. He had his tuba in the back of this and he was going to the junior high. And I can't help but think that that was just the beginning of something that he wanted to be in the band. And he was, at a very young age, he was working hard, getting up early, and taking his tuba where kids should be, and uh, driving it all the way up there, all on his own. It was very impressive. So I started in sixth grade, and uh, my instrument was the trombone. I started out playing trombone, went all the way through. I got into ninth grade um, and uh, I started falling behind. Like uh, I just wasn't able to do some of the things that uh, other trombone players were able to do. And uh, we had a new band director that came in that year. So, you know, a little different in Oklahoma. Um, you know, the they have f four or five band directors that teach at a cluster, you know. So anyway, they hired another assistant band director who was a trombone player came in, it was his first year teaching. Um, I walked into his office one day and I was just telling him about how disappointed I was that I didn't make all district that year because I had made it every year before that. And um, He's like, well, what was the problem? I'm like, I just have a really hard time hitting some of the high notes. And uh, he said, well, you, you, should, you should do the, you should play the bass trombone. And I was like, well, what is that? He's like, well, it's a trombone, but you just play low notes. And I was like, I can do that. I can totally do that. I can do that all day long. So he switched me over to the bass trombone, and then I've never looked back. Like, uh, you know, I made all state several years in a row and went on, got a great scholarship to go to college to play trombone and bass trombone specifically. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's been awesome. It's paid for all of my education and got me literally across the entire country from tip to tip and every direction that you can think of playing that trombone. So my family bought me, uh, you know, my first student model trombone. But as soon as I switched to bass trombone, I started playing on a school instrument. You know, it's not really feasible to, for a ninth grader to just go out and drop three grand on a bass trombone. Um, but it was awful. It was a terrible instrument. Uh, I look back on it now and I'm like, you know, I had to kind of like really work the slide back and forth with your whole arm and the trigger would sometimes work and sometimes not work. There was a slight leak in the connection between uh, the top part and the bottom part. And so when you were playing for a long time, you would just start having water drip down your chest. <laughs> so you would have a big wet spot here. And uh, you know, I played on that thing for three years in high school. Um, and when I finally graduated and I knew I was going into college to play, uh, um, I begged my, I begged my, t my teacher, I was like, can I, can I please take this with me? I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford a bass trombone. And you know, it was like this terrible instrument, but it was the only one I knew. And, uh, so I worked really hard and eventually saved up some money and then, you know, got a brand new bass trombone and realized how awful the other trombone was and how much better I could sound with a, you know, an instrument that wasn't um, leaky and, uh, you know, hard to move. <laughs> I, I never, I never really wanted to be a band director when I first got started. Like I went into college going to do something else completely. I, I loved the feeling of being able to play, the feeling of being able to perform. Um, you know, my best friends still to this day are people that I were, was in high school band with or college band. And, um, you know, for me, it's just shaped everything about me. Um, learning how to practice when you don't want to practice um, and do things when you don't necessarily want to do them. Um, because in order to try and reach a new level, you've got to just try as hard as you can and put yourself out there and keep working. You know, I'm sure it's a cop out to say it as a band director that it's literally changed everything about myself. But then when you talk to other people who are in band, their experiences have been the exact same. 
you know, they may not have went into being a band director or into the music field, but their experience and love for the activity of band um, permeates throughout everything that everyone has ever done if they've been in the band program. Uh, I've been teaching here at the American Fork Junior High School and high school band program for 10 years now. I started in the fall of 2011, actually summer of 2011 with uh, the AF High School Marching Band for that season. I never thought I would enjoy junior high school band. I originally wanted to actually be a professional performer. I went into music ed as the only music degree that actually guaranteed me a job in some sense of form. And then as I started teaching more and more, I found out that I really enjoyed working with students and helping them on their path, learning an instrument and enjoying music and learning uh, how to play and work together. I found out that, hey, we can have really powerful and meaningful musical experiences with first, second, and third year players. My favorite moment in any band was when we went to Indianapolis in 2018. It was my sophomore year. Um, I loved that whole trip, but my favorite part was um, getting onto the field for semifinals and just everybody was so calm and so ready and we all knew that no matter what happened we'd be happy with where we were and what we had done because we were so strong as a band that year and loved each other so much and it was just a really special moment getting on the field with that band. The main one for me was last year in 2019 when we had to run back to the band room and then back to the band field and then we did push-ups and we were told that we couldn't talk and we were just not acting like the AF band should be and that was a hard moment. I realized that everybody else was going through the same thing I was. I wasn't alone and at that moment I don't think anybody necessarily wanted to be there but we built each other back up and got through it and we ended up being an amazing band. Everybody else is putting in the same amount of work as you are and so you know what everybody else is feeling and you don't want to let them down because you know how hard it is and you know how hard they've worked for it. Um, I remember as a freshman and going into our state competition I decided that was going to be my best performance because I didn't want to let my senior section leader down and I didn't want him to ever see me in a bad light and I wanted to do it for him because I knew how much hard work he had put into it. It was perfect. It was the best show I'd had all season. I'm a percussionist because in sixth grade I was hanging out at my friend's house and I heard loud banging in the downstairs and so I went down to check it out and his brother was um, playing the drum set and his hands were on fire and I just thought it was amazing and I wanted to be exactly like him so I signed up for percussion. With the American Fork Band Program's resources with the amazing staff, um, I try not to forget uh, the potential I have through them. Uh, they, they offer so many valuable comments and life lessons that I can take anywhere I go in my life and I try to um, cherish what I have at the American Ford High School Marching Band. I play the trombone because when they came, when the marching band came to our school, um, I was sitting kind of right on the end of the row and the trombones were just like right there and I felt that power and I was like, I want that. And so uh, I chose trombone. They played the Imperial March from Star Wars. I remember uh, taking the marching band to uh, California with Luke and Susan Savage. And uh, Luke came up to me afterward and said, Mr. Miller, what's those funny instruments that are wrapped around this kid's bodies? And I didn't know what he was talking about for a while. And I said, are you talking about a sousaphone? Some kid walked by with one on. He said, that's, that's a sousaphone. He said, well, well, why don't we have any of those? At the time, we had what they called the over-the-shoulder tubas, the cannons, we call them. And they sounded horrible. And uh, that's what we marched the first four or five years I was here at American Fort. 
And he said, well, how come we don't have any of those? I said, well, they're about ten to $12,000 a piece. And uh, he just looked me in the eye and says, how many do you need? And I said, well, we have 10 sousaphone players, tuba players now. I'd like, my goal is to have 12. And he says, when you get back to American Fork, go buy yourself 12 sousaphones. And so Savage's company, a company that did that, just stepped up and helped us buy those. And about 10, 15 years later, he comes up to me and says, John, those tubas are looking a little raggedy, and all of your instruments are now are silver. Why do we have gold sousaphones? And I said, because they're about 12000 maybe $15,000 now. He says, buy silver ones. So we went out and bought 12 silver ones, thanks to goodness to them. We have other community members. Uh, uh, Doug Smith, Otto, you know, Brad Smith has been very, very generous to us about every four or five years if, when we need it, we'll approach him and he, he puts out the money to buy us a complete new marching drum set. All the snares, tenors, bass drums and everything, and that's, that's not cheap. People are always asking me, that, you know, when I retired, was the program going to die? And I said, no, it's not going to die, it's going to get better. And I, I'm so proud of our boosters. Uh, what they've done, I, you know, when, when Nate took over, it was like, yeah, it's going to go, and it just took another step forward. And then when Oren took over, Landis is still going up, and it's just so good. Nobody could be happier than I am. I'd be so depressed if, to see the program die. <laughs> so every time it gets better, I'm just, just tickled pink to make that happen. Mm -hmm.